Ricky, thank you so much for joining us. I know you're busy getting ready for semifinals. How you doing right now, man? Yeah, man, I'm good. I'm just enjoying a, a rest day today. I've been swimming, had a massage, had some lunch, and here I am now. That sounds like a great day. How would you evaluate your fitness now that we've had a couple stages of competition, the Open and quarterfinals, and you are now heading into the Torium Pro? Yeah, I'm as heavy as I've ever been and maintaining that weight, and I feel definitely as strong as I've ever been. Fitness could probably improve a little bit. Um, it is up, up to standard and competitive, but I would obviously like it to improve prove more and I've got about 30 days to, to capitalize on that and um yeah the open was was just so so I just got it done in my training didn't really focus on it too much but quarterfinals I uh, had a good crack and focused on it a fair bit and um I was happy with my performance I uh, copped a few penalties which were fair enough but um yeah all in all I was happy to come out on top for my for my region and, and so, you know, you mentioned that you're, you're the heaviest you've ever been, you know, which, you know, obviously has its ramifications. I've heard of a couple athletes actually doing that this year. Uh, I think Roman Krennikov is the heaviest he's ever been. And where's that, where's that kind of fine line? Is it more of like a, Hey, this is, I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of the engine for some strength or just something that you've evaluated. Like, this is where I stand to see the most improvement. Yeah, it's just. Roman was kind of a, an inspiration at Dubai when I heard how heavy he was and how well he was moving and how well he performed at Dubai. I was like, man, I got to try this out, like trial and error sort of thing. So got the, the missus on, on board and <laughs> focused on the, on the diet and making sure I was getting the calories in every day. And yeah, it's been surprisingly feeling really good. What was it like for you to finally get back out in person on the competition floor in Dubai? I was so nervous. I was extremely nervous. Like probably the most nervous I've ever been in my sporting career from a kid to now. But um, at the end of the weekend, and when I was in the crowd and the uh, awards ceremony was getting set up and stuff. It was just an awesome feeling. It was super surreal. But I soaked it all in, and it was just like, wow, this day has actually come. Like I never thought it was ever gonna gonna happen. But it just shows that. I stayed resilient and patient, which I did. It was yeah, it all paid off. And I was I was there in Dubai. We, we chatted a little bit right after that first event. I remember we're we're at the the this the snow mountain in the desert there, I guess. Um, yeah. And I, I remember you talking about like the the nervousness and, and eventually starting to kind of feel like yourself a little bit after a little. Uh, what what was that moment like? When was when was the switch from? being nervous to, okay, I'm back in my element competing again. And how did you go about that? Yeah, honestly, it wasn't until the last day. Like if there was another a day of competition, it would have been, been awesome. But the last day I started to really bring back some memories, how I used to feel and started to really feel myself. And um, the nerves kind of were still there, but they switched energy in, from like doubt into confidence. And that was... Um, what I felt like I was missing on some of those events early on, like in the, the clean and jerk event and some other things. I wasn't quite as focused as I should have been. I was just a bit distracted with the nerves and uh, yeah, the last day I felt, I felt good. Yeah. And I, I, I'm curious what, what is going through your mind in that first workout, right? Obviously, you know, it's a very unique scenario to begin with, but what, what were you telling yourself at that moment? And, and I think obviously we all understand why there was a little bit of nerves there, but yeah. you know what wh how do you deal with something like that when you there's clearly a ton of pressure on you and it's something that quite frankly you've been waiting four years for yeah was, i didn't really know how to deal with it to be honest because i hadn't i'd never been in that position before so it's just a matter of just facing it head on and seeing where my brain and mentality would go and mid-workout it was kind of got those feels back of like like I'm, I'm in it right now. Like it's happening. Like it's right in front of you. We've got Roman next to me and Lazar and Jeff Adler and everyone's here and this is it. And like kind of the, the nerve feelings and like the, the fear feelings kind of escape you once you're in the workout, because I feel once you start a workout, it's just, you're focusing on, on what's in front of you, the task in front of you, you've got the, the paces you want to hold on the, 
the ski erg, for instance, and the five rounds and just trying to manage your heart rate and how you're feeling. And I was just more so focusing on my execution because I knew I could get a hundred points. So yeah, that was, um, the nerves kind of left me halfway through it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What was your experience like with you know your fellow fellow athletes and the fans having been away from that atmosphere for so long? Yeah, I wasn't too sure how it was all going to go. Like um, when I got to Dubai, the hotel, and seeing all the athletes and stuff, it was obviously pretty pretty sort of cold shoulder sort of stuff and very quiet. But I assume everyone's kind of nervous and um, about the competition. But as as the weekend went on, it, the athletes got more relaxed and I seemed to earn a bit of respect back from some of the athletes and stuff, which, which I appreciated. And I think they got to know me a bit more and, um, yeah, the crowd was, was great. I was coming out of the, the arena after each event and people were there at the door waiting and asking for photos and signatures and stuff like that. So it was, yeah, I was privileged to still have some people there that, um, have got my back. So that was cool. Was that a relief? I mean, I, it seems like, you know, obviously it was something that weighed on you for a bit and, you know, there's different levels to it. There's the, the acceptance by, you know, the people in the sport, whether it's a coach or athletes, but there's also the fans that are major drivers to it. Um, but what, what was that feeling like when, you know, you, you had someone ask for an autograph or you had someone, you know, even if it's just like a, Hey, what's up, you know, in the, in the back. Yeah. yeah. No, it was, it was awesome. It was, it was a good feeling. Like, I thought maybe I'd have a few few that would stand by me, maybe some Australians that were there watching and stuff, but it seemed to be like anyone and everyone were keen to say good day and ask for a photo and and all that. So it was, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of relieving in, in the end, yeah. When you finally got out on the competition floor and you know, you're you're going through each event, how did what you've been through these past four years fuel you through that competition. Yeah. Yeah. It's massive. Like the, the four years has been, been tough. It's been an up and down roller coaster of, of like emotions. Like in the end, I can't complain about my life. I have a great life. I have a great family. I have great friends. I'm surrounded by an awesome community at my, my brother's gym at Benton. And like, I had nothing to complain or whinge about. It was more just the internal kind of um stuff I had to deal with just that I couldn't compete and just felt like I was just a, a lion locked in a cage and couldn't express who I truly am and what I'm capable of. So that was kind of the hardest part for me and like four years just felt like forever and I didn't know how I was gonna wait that long and I um kind of went went off on a different tangent and tried to pursue rugby league which was like my, my childhood dream and sport, my chosen sport as a kid. And I moved states for that and had like a, a train and trial opportunity to earn a contract. And that all kind of flipped on its head due to the ban and stuff. So in the end, I just had to, to wait it out and be patient and yeah, the, the resilience it took. And just just to stay at that level, and like commit to the program and the volume and intensity over that time was, was probably the hardest part. Um, it's easy just to go into a gym and just do a class and hang out with the community. And I, I don't lie. I won't lie. I did do that for a, a long time, but it was just like, this isn't going to be enough if I want to come back. So I need to stay focused and keep putting in the, the work and the volume that's required to be one of the best in the world. Out of curiosity, what league were you trying to make here? Rugby league. What was was uh, like, what area um, of the country? Oh, Queensland. Oh, so yeah, you were in I Australia. Moved. Sorry, I thought you came over. To yeah. Sydney. Okay. Yeah. All right. I moved like interstate, like Australia. Sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, misunderstood yeah, you. Up, okay. Yeah, up to Queensland and. Okay. Uh, it's about it. Yeah. It's yeah. A pretty big flight. About a twenty-hour drive. Yeah, that's. I ended up live. Ended up living there for like ten months. I couldn't play footy, so I just stayed there and just worked a job and met new people and just went mountain biking and went surfing and out to the islands fishing and just kind of lived, lived the Australian life. <laughs> yeah. 
do you feel like being able to do that at least was like had it some sort of benefit to you or to be able to kind of I don't know, separate yourself from that a little bit and live that kind of, I guess, typical Australian life. Cause I, I hear you mention like, you felt like you're just like, kind of like this line in a cage. And I'm, I'm curious, like, how were you able to cope? Right. Cause you know, obviously there's a, there's all this yeah. like world comes crashing down. And I think a lot of people just assume that like, Oh, you deal with it for four years, you move on. And like, they, we never talk about the process in between. Um, and yeah. as a, like, as a person, as a human, like, how are you able to cope with that? Yeah. Yeah, it was tough, but living in Australia definitely helps. And like the the outback here and the nature is like awesome. You can explore for days and weeks. And I pretty much bought a mountain bike, and I would literally just go out every day into the mountains and just ride my bike for like three or four hours, just up and down the mountain, and put my headphones in with my camel pack and just and it just like yeah, just take my mind off it because when you're going down a, a mountain head first you've got nothing else to think about but what's in front of you <laughs> so you gotta be pretty present but um yeah i just surrounded myself with with people that that um were supportive and had my back and um yeah i just had to get on with it like obviously i needed to make money so i had had to work a job and make ends meet with that but i was like I still am now, I I don't, as much free time I get outside of the gym, I make the most of it. Like I'm always out with my dog on the skateboard and going down the beach for a swim or I'm going up the mountains, my mountain bike or even times that I was going to the motocross track with my mates and we were going just for a ride on my old motorbike, which I sold now because it's too dangerous to yeah, no, I mean, season. <laughs> smart. That's smart. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good move right there. Yeah. Uh, but Another- in in the end, like I was still doing a lot of CrossFit um, training because I just love love the sport. I love the methodology methodology of the training and how it makes you feel. And I would still go to the gym every day, but I just wouldn't do like two sessions. It'd just be like an hour and a half, two hours, just mash it out, lay on the floor at the end feel good about yourself and you know get on with the day and um yeah keep myself occupied now that you are back in a game season actively participating in it how does that help you sort of tune out all the noise around you yeah i just suppose i just gotta focus on myself and the task in front of me but in the end it's just a workout um that you're doing on the stadium in front of a couple of thousand people. Just got to, um, I just simplify it a lot in my head and just bring it back to basics and just focus on the workout in front of me and don't let any of the, the outside world get in my way and just always know if I execute and put my best performance um, first and in front of me that usually I uh, come out on top or if not close to so just, uh, yeah focus of that execution one one major part of of your comeback and you know we had a chance to talk with him when the announcement was made is, is getting to work with justin kotler and the underdogs crew um and what has been kind of justin's role in in your progress to to coming back and what has it been like working with a, a coach both remotely and as someone who you know, really in, in a really tough time was someone who opened his door to you. Yeah. Yeah. I was super appreciative of, of Kotler opening his arms to me and welcoming me, welcoming me into the underdogs family. And yeah, he's played a huge part in just, um, just feeling like I belong again and just, um, making me feel like I'm a part of it all. And he's been super welcoming and just kind of just, just kind of been there as a mate. In the end, like it's not like a super serious coach where he screams and yells and like he's onto me all the time. He's just more like worried about my my general health, my like my physical health and mental health and all that. So when I wanted when I wanted to come back, I wanted to do it in a more professional way and not try and just do it all on my own, um, kind of like I did last time. And I wanted to have that support network. Uh, from Justin and like, people like that 
uh, yeah, when it came around to it, it, I wanted to reach out to him for a long time. And it wasn't until I heard him on another podcast say that I was one athlete in the world that he would love to work with. And then it was just like, well, this is meant to be. So I reached out and that's how it all started. Yeah, he's been a massive, massive help. And I'm looking forward to uh, what's to come. Why do you think he's such a good fit for you? Um, I think he's just like, he's like super relaxed, but then again, he's super like, like honest and to the point and just like controlled aggression sort of, sort of <laughs> way. And I feel like that's just kind of similar mentality to how I work. Like I'm a super relaxed sort of person and when I get on the floor it's just like an alter ego sort of mentality comes out. So I just seen seen that in him and just thought thought it'd be a good fit. It, it, it's interesting you say that because I feel like uh, you can you can definitely see the different parts of it, right? Like he he's clearly got some passion in him, he'll let it fly every once in a while, but he also seems very in control of it and thoughtful and it's um I, there's there's something to being able to access all those different emotions at different times, but also being in control of that. Um, and it seems like something like obviously that, that has resonated with you. And, and, I, and I'm curious, is there anything in particular that you guys have been focused on both from mindset or uh, mentality that is that you, you feel like, Oh man, this is, this has been great. This has been a big difference for me this year. Um, nothing off the top of my head, but, um, when I first came to him, I had a lot of injuries that I was dealing with because like I was working a pretty much a full-time job, four or five hours, uh, four to five days a week, um, like grinding concrete, polishing concrete. I was always bending over, bending my back like on hand grinders and doing the shitty labor and stuff. So mm -hmm. I was training after work from like 4.30 p.m. to like, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. Sometimes I'd start late and wouldn't finish till 9 o'clock at night. So, like, my warm-ups and my accessories and rehab stuff was just out the window. I was just getting in, getting it done, slapping the weights on the bar and just moving. So it didn't really work well for my body. And I had, at one point, I had five bulging discs out my back. And, I, like, jeez. <laughs> That's like every one. I'm like, Oh. Yeah, for like 10 weeks I couldn't train, I was just literally just going to the gym and do rehab stuff and stretch and whatever, it wouldn't hurt my back and this was like probably September last year. Damn. And it wasn't until like before Dubai, like I knew once that was kind of sealed, you know, I was going there, it was like, I can't continue to do what I'm doing and expect to perform at the level I want to perform. So like I had to throw work in and try and manage some finances some way. So my family stepped up and offered that they would help out with my funds and my travel to Dubai and had a couple of local sponsors that helped out as well. So literally seven weeks before Dubai, I, up work and just was able to focus on training and um yeah that was all of this was a big shock to Kotler like he didn't realize how how broken I was and how many injuries I was dealing with and stuff so that kind of slowed him up in terms of programs that he was throwing at me so that's been a um, massive focus and he seems to have a, some other athletes that are really good with rehab and through stuff there. So he um, recommended a lot of good programs there and um, that was a big focus and uh, yeah up until about a month out in Dubai I started feeling really good and just was able to just focus on my nutrition again with more hours in the day not working and was able to warm up probably and stretch and do all the one percenters so um, yeah that really helped so Cutler's um yeah, he always messages me, how's the body? How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm like, sending in my times and the weights that I'm hitting, and he's like, 
doesn't even respond like, yeah, that's a good time or whatever. He's just like, how's the body? <laughs> <laughs> making sure, <laughs> making sure I'm still in one piece. He's like, I don't care if you smoke the workout, but yeah. don't fuck, it, fuck your body doing it. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a great time, but if you can't keep going, that's, they, we, we, don't, we don't need that. Yeah. Uh, you said multiple times, you know, t- just now and then on, on other outlets, I've heard you on, you know, how much you love the methodology, how much you love the sport. What's been the most fun part about being back? Um, did like saying my name on the top of the leaderboard for the quarterfinals. <laughs> uh, I'm a pretty competitive person, so the leaderboard's always nice to look at when, when you're on top. But um, also just the, uh, it's just like, I was so used to just comparing times and bursting people on the TV and like um, they're trying to keep up to date with where I was at from an outside perspective. And I, I did do that early on, like 18, 19 and stuff, but it, it, it was mentally breaking me. It was just making things worse because I was getting such good results and I just couldn't do anything about it. And it was just making me frustrated and angry. So I kind of gave that a break for, for a whole year and, um, I didn't start really doing that again until uh, for the, the online games, I think 2020. I gave that, I seen that as a good opportunity, so I gave that a crack. And, uh, yeah, it's just awesome to be, it's just a different feeling mentally that to know I'm part of it now. It's like, uh, this, this workout actually means something, like, you can't stuff it up. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, now you get to, um, you know, compete at the Torian Pro at the semifinals, and it's one. You know, it's going to be in Australia. Um, are there any nerves, or is there is there excitement? Like, what what is the feeling about finally getting to step into? Because I'm sure you may have done minor things here and there, but this is really like the first full step, like competition in person against fellow people from Australia, your country, in front of uh, you know a home country crowd as well. And I'm just curious, how how is that stirring up things for you? Yeah, no, it's, it's the qualifying for the CrossFit Games. So to be honest, I'd be more nervous for this event than I would be at the CrossFit Games. Like these events, uh, you can't afford any mistakes. It's like Execution has to be on point. Everything has to be on point. The one weekend, your only opportunity, you have to be healthy, you have to be not injured, not have COVID. Everything has to line up for that weekend. So, yeah, it's like a lot of pressure. It's a lot of a lot of nerves. And in terms of like the competition and what's in front of me, I'm I'm fairly confident in my abilities, and uh, it's just a matter of continuing to build that confidence over the next. 30 days and um, turn up and just, yeah, execute on the day and put my best foot forward. How does that compare? How does it, how does it, this feeling right now compare to the first time you made regionals? Like, cause, cause really this is kind of like a first time all, all over again, almost, yeah. but it's under like, you know, you know, completely different circumstances. So I'm yeah. curious how those, those experiences or that, how yeah. that feeling mm. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah, completely different feeling. Like the first time I did regionals, I was just like, just happy to be there and just mesmerized at what I was getting into. And uh, hell yeah, I've made regionals and get to verse all these guys that I used to watch, watch, like compete at the games and watch my brother compete against. And now it's me and it's my turn. And it was more just like uh, participation participating and just see how I go and have fun with it. But now I see it more as, as my job and a lot more of a serious approach. And this is my main career and this is what I want to um, make a career out of and focus on. So it's Torian that which is pretty much regionals is, is a part of that job. So um, yeah, it's a very different feeling and, I feel like um, there is a pressure for me to perform and whether there is or not, uh, I like to create that pressure in my head because I deal with pressure pretty well and um, yeah, look forward to going down for three days. 
you just that was actually going to be my next question because you go that first weekend and you were going to be one of the most watched athletes not only in person but also people who are just paying attention to what is going on in the sport you mentioned you like the pressure you thrive under it what what do you think it is about you that allows you to do well when you know the spotlight is really on you I don't know. I think it's just an expectation that I put on myself. So if there's an expectation, a high expectation out there, then then I have to perform to live up to that expectation. So I feel like I've kind of had that from a, from a kid growing up. I was um, always the one at school and like all through school sport and that, like I was always the one that like, Oh shit, Ricky's here. Like he's the one to beat sort of thing. And, um, always kind of felt that pressure from other kids and other parents at the time through school and even through my footy days it was like always like a rivalry with the other teams and stuff they were always trying to take me out because they felt if they took me out then they'd, they'd beat us take over the team um, I think it's just something I've developed from a from a young age and um, you know, something I thrive off and uh, seem to have work well with my um, performance. It's interesting because, you know, you talk about some of the other sports that you've done or other uh, things that you've gotten enjoyment from, whether it's, you know, uh, rugby league or, um, you know, mountain biking, which are very, I would say, very high intensity, high, like high impact, high risk, high reward type stuff. Um, and do you, is that something you've always been gravitated toward? Do you feel like that has to be a, a piece of, what is in, involved in whatever it is you do? Is that just kind of how you are? Because CrossFit, I feel like, is a is a very high intensity thing, and it has a little bit of that juice to it every time you take the floor because it's kind of you know uh, almost every yeah. workout is 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 important. And and I, I'm just curious because some people thrive in that and some people don't. And, I, and I'm just curious if it was like you feel that kind of jolt from that those types of sports. Yeah, yeah for sure. At school, I just any sport that was on the, on offer, I would put my hand up and um, try and get involved because it'd get me out of class and be able to go out, and <laughs> go outside and enjoy the outdoors and play sport. But um, yeah, rugby league was always my biggest sport growing up. Um, always played touch touch football as well. I even got into snowboarding through school, um, like snowboard cross. I was right into got to like state level for that. Um, that was always always a fun time. Um, and then later age, around 15, I think it was, I got into flat track racing. Um, that was pretty big in the States in some areas. Um, my uncle was like right into that. So me and my dad and my uncle got right into that, bought bikes and used to go to the races most weekends and um, yeah, zoom around the track as fast as I could. And then... Yeah, I've always just chased that kind of, I love that adrenaline feeling and love anything that goes fast and just like you don't think about nothing but what's in front of you. The outside world just becomes irrelevant and you're just so in the present moment and just in that flow state and the adrenaline and I think that's why when I come from motorbikes and rugby league and snowboarding and that, like I've, I've found that similar kind of um, energy and passion in CrossFit to um, go deep into those workouts and push through the pain and um, do things that you didn't think you could um, just from pure willpower and um, having that mentality to push past your comfort zone. And, and, when you, and when you get through it, like after every workout, it's like at the time it sucked and you'd hurt a lot, but after the workout, it's, like some weird addiction it's like yeah you know, i want to do that again so i think um crossfit has that kind of feeling about it i think we can all relate to have you thought about what the reaction is going to be when you're at the torium pro you step on the floor for the first time and do you even care yeah don't really care to be honest um whatever it is it will be and i just have to focus on what's in front of me and the task that I'm there to do and not let it get to my head if it's um, 
It could be really good, it could be really bad, but yeah, it, it is what it is. Uh, and I think for us, obviously, we're United States based, so there's there's a, a little bit of out of touchness for us sometimes on the day to day you know goings in some of the other regions like Europe or Australia. Um, do you feel do you feel like have just in general like whether it's local comps or whatever because you you know you know your your brother's gym is, is active and you have a community there. Do you feel like the the acceptance or the the welcoming from Australia came well before you were even on the competition floor. I'm just curious when that switch happened and, and what the sentiment and temperature has been down there. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of the, the community over here, I feel like, um, they were accepting of it pretty, pretty quick. Um, with what happened and stuff. And but I feel like with the athletes over here kind of still isn't really settled. Like I haven't really seen any of them and, I feel like I'm more accepting of like the Europeans and some of the Americans now. Like I didn't really get a chance to compete with them at Miami, which I feel like would have um, turned some things around if I was involved in that, which kind of happened at Dubai. I felt like with the Europeans from the start of the comp to the end of the comp, kind of come around and as I said before, in that respect. But I think the Australians, it's, the athletes are still still on the fence and I don't know what it is, whether it's like a, an envy thing or jealous thing or like a, something that they, I just feel like they all want to beat me. Do you think some uh, of that's justified? Uh, probably just what I think, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure. I, I, I never, that's just how I perceive it anyway. So, hmm. Adversity is a great teacher and so you've certainly been through your share of it in the last you know, four years. What are the main things that you just learned about yourself as a person being away from the sport that you love so much for as long as you were? Um, sorry, what was that? The, some of the adversity? Yeah. What did you learn? What did you learn about yourself over the past four years being away from the sport and facing the adversity that you faced? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably just like, like we all make mistakes in life and everyone has the day-to-day stresses and anxieties and things that they worry about. But it's, it's like life always goes on and like it's, it's, I've learned that you can't change the past and if, if things happen and you're pissed off about it or you're angry about it, it's just, you can't hold a grudge and let that control your life. And I think I've learned a lot to just be accepting of things and let things go on and just move on with life and learn from, learn from the mistakes or whatever happened and try not to do it again. And yeah, it's been, um, I feel, I feel like I've matured a lot since, since that time and, um, I can definitely feel it in my training and, and, um, it's definitely helped with my performance and just the way I've, uh, matured into the athlete I am. And, um, I think I've just yeah, become a lot stronger mentally. And I used to just go into the gym and just think that I had to train as hard as I could and smash myself and go as fast as I could and lift as heavy as I could and if I didn't do that and I was falling behind and I've learned that it's just you have to focus on on your health and the quality of your movement and getting into the gym and actually fine tuning your skills and working on your weaknesses and not just um, getting it done and laying on the floor smashing yourself and doesn't really um not really longevity on our last. So I definitely learned that in the last four years. Yeah. Uh, uh, you mentioned something earlier, and then this is the last question I have is, uh, you, you know, you got, you went to Wadapalooza. Uh, obviously, you had to withdraw. And I, I talked, I, we spoke a little bit because I, I bumped into you and you, you were dealing with some food poisoning stuff. And, you know, obviously, it's a kind of a disappointment to, 
to go out there and not be able to compete and not be able to take that competition for in a pretty cool environment. But you got to see that event from a different side, you know, being around, walking around, um, interacting people. And I, I imagine that sometimes that might be a little bit more vulnerable, right? Because you don't have the competition of the, uh, you don't have the competition floor as kind of a, a safe haven or a protection from the general public. I'm curious, what what was it, that experience like in, in walking around Wadapalooza and in, interacting with people? Yeah, it ended up being a great experience. At first, I wasn't sure how it was going to go and how the fans were going to interact with me walking around the crowd and um, obviously watching the well, the first day I couldn't even attend the event. I was just on the lounge, between the lounge and the toilet. So, but when I got to watch the the first event, like it, it was kind of grabbing me by the heart and ripping it out. Like it was, it was um, pretty hard to watch, but in the end, I just had to accept what what was happening, and I just turned it into a an opportunity to soak it all up and and watch it all go down and um, be a part of the community and get to meet different brands and people and made the most out of that. And yeah, the fans are really really supportive. I had heaps of people stopping and asking for photos and stuff, which um, yeah, I was super grateful about and. That, that event's wicked. I like, hope I can get back there next year and be healthy and just like under the lights and on the water there. Amazing event. Yeah, I had a great time and I um, yeah, got to meet lots of people. I got a manager out of it and some sponsors and stuff. So other than being sick and not being able to compete, it was in the end it was a worthwhile there's still a lot that needs to happen between you know now and the games, but if all goes well, you wind up back in Madison. What do you think the emotions are going to be like for you when you make it back to the CrossFit games? Yeah, I think it'd be pretty heavy. Uh, um, it'd be emotional, but exciting at the same time. It would be kind of um, like, uh, right, it's happening. Here it is. This is what you've been waiting for for will be five years when it happens. So all the hard work and every day I woke up and got into the gym and put in the hard work to be there. It's going to be right there in front of me, and the opportunity is going to be there for the taking. So yeah, I'll be super super fired up. I'll be excited, and I don't think like the emotions will hit me until it's all over because. There'd be a lot of nerves and just trying to stay focused on the task at hand. And I think after the last workout, I think the emotions will be pretty heavy then, I would imagine. Well, Ricky, we really want to thank you for taking the time to do this. Enjoy the rest of your off day. Best of luck at the Torium Pro. And uh, can't wait to see you back out there uh, competing at that level, man. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tommy.